Okay, um, another five questions. This time on trigonometry and Pythagoras. Now, Pythagoras is a C grade um, topic, and trigonometry is actually a B grade topic. Now, they both apply to right angled triangles, um, but this, the trick is to spot when you're using one and when you're using the other. Okay? So let's look at this first question. It's supposed to be a right angled triangle, and it tells us to use Pythagoras in this case, uh, so it's fine. But if we weren't told to use Pythagoras, we want to find out the length of A to C, so we want to find out this unknown length. And in the right angle triangle, if we've got three lengths, everything to do with length, then it's definitely Pythagoras. Now Pythagoras' theorem says that C squared is A squared plus B squared. Now you should know that. You should also know that this one here, the C, now it doesn't matter in terms of this triangle here, but the C is always the longest side on a triangle. So let's rewrite this with uh, this expression, this formula, but with our, what we've got. The longest side is x, so x squared must be 9 squared plus 5 squared. And it doesn't matter which way around you get these two, but this one's definitely the hypotenuse on the longest side. So here I've got to find out x squared is uh, 9 squared, just tap into your calculator, plus 5 squared which comes out as 106. So I've squared them, 81 and 25, and I've added them together. But I want to find the value of x. I've only got the value of x squared. So I've got to undo, I've got to do the inverse process. So the inverse process of squared is square root. So I've got to do the square root of 106. And that comes out to just a little bit more than 10. 10.295 014, which is roughly, if I round it, let's round it to one decimal place, 10.3 centimetres to one decimal place. So look at this question. Again, this should be a right angle triangle in here. Now, we're not told what to use this, so we've got to work out whether we're using trigonometry or Pythagoras. And in this case, we've got a length, a length, and I want to work out BC, which is this side down here. So again, I've got three lengths, so it's got to be another Pythagoras question. C squared is A squared plus B squared. Let's go forward and fill out our information. Remember that RC squared is the longest side. So 8.3 squared is equal to 2.5 squared plus X squared. Now, I want to get x squared on its own, so to find x squared on its own, I'm going to have to do an inverse process. I'm going to have to do 8.3 squared minus 2.5 squared. Notice this case over here, I had to add them together when I wanted to find x squared. That's because I was adding two short sides to get a long side. I wanted to find the longest side here. However, in this question, question 2, I've got the longest side, so I need to find one of the short sides. So I'm actually doing a subtract squaring them and then subtracting them. So x squared is equal to 8.3 squared take away 2.5 squared comes out as 62.64 okay but actually I wanted to find out what x is not x squared so I've got to do the inverse process which is the square root that comes out 7.91454375. So x is approximately equal to 7.9 meters to one decimal place. Now, because it doesn't tell us what to round the answers to in either of these questions, we just have to choose an appropriate rounding. So one decimal or two decimal places is usually fine. You notice know, in this case the question was in one decimal place, so my answer to one decimal place is also fine. It's usually best to try and do the same as the question. In this case there was whole numbers, so using a whole number wouldn't be very accurate, so I've gone to one decimal place anyway. Okay, in this question I want to find out the length of AB, which is this side, let's call it X here. So we've got a right angle triangle and we want to find out AB. So in this case, we've got an angle involved, so we must be using trigonometry instead of Pythagoras because we've got two lengths and an angle. So we'll remember a little saying 
know what? Remember this is the saying so ka to there's lots of little phrases, little silly things you can do to remember these. So I just remember the phrase so ka toa, where s is sine, c is cosine, t is tangent. Now I need to label all my sides up here and work out which one of these three I need. Longest side is hypotenuse, opposite the angle, so opposite the 24 is called the opposite, next to is the, high, uh, is the adjacent. Now I don't want this one in this case because I want I've got the 7.4 and I want to work out the adjacent x so I want the ka, the one with a and h in it. So well of these three things I actually want to work out the a so using this little formula triangle if I cover up the a with my finger you can just put your finger on the screen now if you cover up the a you told that a is c times h, in which case for us, x is equal to cosine of 24 times by the hypotenuse 7.4. Now using my scientific calculator, I've got to be a bit careful here because I need to make sure that I, if I'm using brackets, I need to close my brackets on the 24 because I want to find the cosine of 24 as a number and then times the answer by 7. I don't want to do 24 times 7.4, it's cosine of 24. So, uh, cosine of 24 times by 7.4 means that x comes out as, writing the whole number down, 6.760236. Three eight seven. So x is roughly equal. I'm going to go to two decimal places in this case. Six point seven six centimeters. Two decimal places. Look at this question here. Again, I've got a right angle triangle. I've got two lengths, but I want to find out this uh, angle up here. And I'm going to call this angle theta. And we just usually use the symbol theta. For angles, it's just like an X or an unknown, it's called theta. Now, do what I did before, let's label up the different parts of the triangle. This is the hypotenuse, this is opposite the angle, hypotenuse is the longest, O is opposite, A is next to. In this case, I've got information next to A and O, so I don't want the H. So, in terms of my so ka and TOA, I'm going to be using the TOA one because I've got the A and the O, uh, uh, the A and the O, and that's the only formula that's got A and O in it, is TOA. And I want to find out the angle, I've got the A and O, so I want to find out the tangent. So the tangent of this unknown theta is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. So in our question we've got tan theta is equal to 3.8 divided by 2.4. But I don't want tan theta, I actually want to work out what theta is. Again, I've got to do the inverse process. Now in a calculator there is an inverse of tan, so tan theta is this, so I want to do the inverse tan, and we write that as tan minus 1. Inverse tan of 3.8 divided by 2.4. And if you look carefully on your calculator, you have above the tan button there's a little tan minus one and you've got to use the shift button on your calculator. So the 3.8 divided by 2.4 and then I want to inverse tan that comes up with the answer 57.72435569 degrees so theta is roughly 57.7 degrees if I round it to one decimal place. Okay, you might need to go back and have a look at these um, two questions again to check you understand how I picked cosine in this question and tangent in this question and also how I found that did the inverse tan here but I didn't need to do it in this question in question three over here. And last question then. This time says the diagram shows three tans. Again we should have a right angle triangle. 
calculate the bearing. I need to work out the bearing. I need to remember some things about bearings. I was on one of the videos. So for bearings, there was three important points of bearings. One, start at north. Two, they go clockwise in that direction. And three, they're supposed to be three digits. Okay. So for me, my bearing, I'm supposed to find the bearing of A town from B town. So I'm standing at B town. That's my north direction going up. And I want to find the bearing all the way around there. All the way around until I hit this line, until I'm facing down towards I town. So actually, I'm going to need this angle in here. I'm going to call that theta. And once I've found that, I'm going to add it to 180. So from north to south will be 180. Plus this angle theta is what I've got to turn through. So um, I need to find theta first. So this is going to be a trig question, a trigonometry question, because it's got an angle involved. Hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. I'm not going to need the hypotenuse. So in terms of this, in terms of this question, so ka toa, I need to pick out the one that's got A and O in it, which it happens to be toa again. It's not always going to be that, I've just had two toa questions on the trot there. So I want to find out, I know that T, it's that uh, formula one, is O over A. So I know that tan of our angle theta is equal to the opposite, which in our case is 15.2, divided by the adjacent, which is 9.5. And again, like before, I want to find out theta, so I need to do an inverse tangent thing. So theta is equal to tan minus 1 of 15.2 over 9.5. So I'm going to have to do that all on my scientific calculator. Work out 15.2 divided by 9.5. Get the answer 1.6. Now you want to do inverse tangent, so that's the shift button again. Shift to tangent. I get 57.9946167 degrees. Okay, so I know that this in here is roughly. It's going to be 58 degrees if I round it to one decimal place, or 58.0 degrees, which is approximately 58 degrees. So to find the bearing in this question, I need to add 180 on to our 58 degrees, because I've got to start north, going clockwise, I've got to turn through 180 plus my theta, which is going to come out as 238 degrees. And I measured that to the nearest degree. I think maybe you need to go back and have a look at these videos. It's um, a few little tricky bits just to get familiar with. Okay.